What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, and in our last video we were talking about interfaces and class delegation, all of that fun stuff. If you didn't catch it, be sure to go back and watch it because this video we're talking about type aliases and we are going to build off of our animals example. So one thing that we were doing with the animals um, is we had this food, we had um, talking, we had all sorts of things that were mapping to a string. Which is fine, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, for me, it was a little bit annoying. It, just because, like, it would be nicer to be able to say, you know, what what this was actually doing. I'm sorry as I kind of clean clean up the code a little bit as I go. What would be nice is if we could make use of the string itself, but call it something else. And luckily, Kotlin allows us to do just that. It is this very simple keyword called type alias. And we could say type alias, so uh, movement equals string. And then we can say can move will return movement instead. And similar thing, you know, type alias can talk. Well, talk equals string. And type alias food equals string. And then we just replace. So talk, talk, food, food. And then, you know, we'll have to do a little bit of cleanup work now. Um, this would have been more ideal to do up front, but uh, essentially what we're saying, though, is anytime that we call something movement, talk, or food, allow us to call it that, but it should reference, it should point to the string instance, the string object. So as I go through and kind of, you know, clean this up a bit, uh, we can say, you know, our food, food there, fast mover, this should return a movement. Uh, again, should return a movement. And this one, talk. We want that one to return a talk and talk. And then, you know, we can still run the code just to prove it. It still works. It still does exactly what, what you would think it would do. But it just allows us to call it something else. Um, another one, you know, boolean here, true if it enjoyed it, false if it if it was disgusted, we could so say instead like type alias did enjoy equals boolean. And then instead of there, you know, we just return did enjoy. And then you know, don't have to document anymore because it's a little bit more obvious whether or not it enjoyed it. And we'll just say did enjoy, did enjoy. And there we go. So. There's not really too much else. I mean, this was a fairly simple example. Like, mo you know, you probably aren't going to type alias to a string too often in, in, in the real world. You may very well want to type alias to a Boolean if you just have something that has two different options, but you want to provide nicer documentation. So, it's, you know, it, it reads a little bit nicer to say eat and then it'll return did enjoy. Uh, and you know, true or false. Uh, but another thing that this comes in handy for is if you're integrating with another third party library and they named things either really poorly where you don't know what they're doing, so you just want to rename them, make the rest of your code a little bit nicer, or if you want to do something where instead of uh, like renaming it that way, they the library actually used names that you want to use yourself, uh, you can just type alias them to be something else. So, like, you can maybe say, like, I don't know if if there's some API response that you're getting back and you're using like a, a person API, but that that person itself is your own class you want to define. You can just say type alias person, so the the person like coming from say this this API will equal like API person. That's something that um, I've done in in the past on on projects and stuff like that, but. Yeah, type aliases, really neat, give you the ability to, to rename something, um, either for documentation's sake, for moving things around, or if you just need to use that name yourself and you just want to rename uh, the library that you're using um, for another reason. Uh, the only other one that I would point out is 
if you type alias, so like movement, before this had to be a string, now we could say like, I don't know, like char sequence, or um, if if the underlying direct class itself is changing, you can uh, change it here as opposed to multiple places, or if the name changes, you can change it in one spot as opposed to multiple, but that's a little bit more of a, a diminishing return. Probably not going to get that too often, but you know, another, another nice thing with type aliases. So uh, this was a short video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. If you want to get more Kotlin videos, hit the notification bell. You'll get push notifications whenever I upload a new one. Currently trying to do about three a week. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.